OK, hello everyone. So in class we proved that any countable set is null, and hence there is no surprise that any proper interval is uncountable. However, uncountable set can be null, provided that points are sufficiently sparsely distributed. So the point of this example is to construct a null set which is in fact is an uncountable set. And it's called the counter set. A very famous example. So we construct that set iteratively. Okay. So let's denote the initial set by C naught and C interval from 0 to 1, the closed interval. And then the next step will be to remove the middle field. Okay, so we're going to construct new interval, a new set, say C1, which is obtained by removing from the previous set the middle field. So the middle field will be the subinterval one field to two fields. So as a result we obtain a set which consists of two closed intervals. Okay, so I'm going to put here two points. Okay, and now using the razor I'm going to remove the middle part. Okay, so now the next step is to remove the middle field of each of these two intervals. So we do the same thing. So we construct the next step, set C2 by removing from C1 two intervals. Okay, so the middle field of the first subinterval will be an interval 1, 9 to 2 over 9 and then for the next one we have 7 over 9 to 8 ninths. Okay, and again now using again the arrays I'm going to remove the middle fields. Alright, so that is the interval. We the set we obtain at the second step, so now it consists of four intervals. So the length of each interval, as you can see, one ninth, okay, and uh, as you can expect, at the ninth end step, we obtain a set C n, uh, which consists of two to the n disjoint closed intervals, and each of length. 1 over 3 to the power n. So now, now what we have? We have that the total the total length of set C n is the product of these two numbers, so it will be 2 thirds to the power n. And also we can see that actually the interval C naught contains set C1, which in turn contains set C2. Okay, and then we have a sequence of offsets. So now how we define the counter set? Okay, so the counter set will be defined as a union. Okay, so let me put it right here. So definition of the counter set is defined as an intersection of this sets. Okay. Now the next step is to show that the C is a null set. Okay. C is null. Okay, so how we can prove it? We just the proof is based on the definition of the null set. Okay, so now that we also for any given epsilon greater than zero we want to construct a set of intervals of total length less than epsilon that covers C, covers the set C. Okay, so the, what we are going to do? So, given any epsilon greater than zero, we'll choose choose n so large that okay, that two thirds to the power n is less than epsilon. Okay, so the formula. I mean, if you take the logarithm, you, then you can obtain the formula for n. That will be an integer 
obtained by rounding up of this phone fraction ln of epsilon divided by ln of two thirds. Okay. Now the next observation is actually that C is contained in C n. Okay. And also we know that C n consists of two to the power n intervals. Right? And the total length is less than epsilon. Okay, because we choose we choose n so that the length of C n, which is actually is two thirds to the power n, is less than epsilon. Okay, so therefore by definition and we constructed that sequence of of intervals and by definition C is a null set. Okay, so now the next step is to prove that C is actually is uncountable set. Okay. So that is page three, and then the next problem, problem two, is to show that set C is uncountable. Okay. So in this case, we are going to use so-called ternary arithmetic. So we can notice that each x from the unit, from the closed unit interval, can be expressed in the following form. Okay. So we can write x as a sum n changes from 1 to infinity and we have a n over 3 to the power n where a n actually are digits selected from 3 integers 0, 1 and 2 okay so in other words x can be written in the following form as a fraction okay, okay. in base 3 uh, what about one? Okay, so one can be also written in this form. So we can notice that one can be expressed as an infinite series. Okay, so that is actually the geometric progression, and there is no surprise that the sum is actually is one. Or we can write using the, uh, the following fraction. So 0 0.2222 and so on. Okay. So let us think about the, st the structure of this set. Okay. So what about set C1? So set C1 was obtained by removing the middle field okay so let us think what what we have in that middle field what kind of numbers okay so the claim is that c1 doesn't have axis with a1 equal equal to 1 okay so again, so what is that set we are talking about? Let me just repeat the picture. Okay. So we have two intervals. And uh, the for the first intervals the boundaries are zero and one third. So zero can be written alright in a very simple way. What about one third? One third can be written also in the following way. Okay, so it can be written in the way that 
the first digit is zero, and then we have a sequence of of twos. Okay. So any number between zero and one third actually can be represented by a fraction such that digit a one is zero. Okay. So in other words, here we have axis of the following form. So we have zero point zero. Okay. And then we have something else. So other digits can be any digits between zero and two. Okay, so what about two thirds? So two thirds can be written as zero point two. And again in the same ternary form. So in other words, in this interval we have axis of the following form, zero point two, and then again the rest can be composed of any uh, any digits for between zero and two. Okay? So C one doesn't have axis for which A one is one. Okay? So so the same story about C2. So if you consider the structure of C2, then C2 doesn't have axis with A1 equal to 1 or A2 equal to 1. Okay. Again, we can consider four intervals and then find uh, the formula for axis that lies in those intervals. Okay. So in other words, we can say that X belongs to C if and only if all its digits are chosen from the set from this from these two digits, zero and two. So we cannot have one among the digits. Okay. So what does it mean? Okay. It means that the number, any number from uh, set C is actually can be represented as a sequence of natural numbers. Okay. So each X from C corresponds to some sequence of natural numbers. Let me write that. Each x from C corresponds to a sequence of natural numbers. Okay, so why why it's so? Okay, we can construct a bijection between these two sets. So F you map C one uh, onto the set of sequences of natural numbers, it, uh, that will be a one to one correspondence. Okay, so we take a number x from C, okay, that can be written as a fraction, and then we obtain a set of natural numbers such that n belongs to the set if and only if the nth digit is 2. Okay. So for example, so if x is the following digits, so 0 0.022202. Okay? And then we have zeros after that. So in this case we have two on the second, on the third, and on the on the fifth places. So in this case that x will be mapped into the set of three natural numbers two, three and five. Okay. So th now that means that the number of elements in C is the same as the number of elements in this power set, which as we know is not is not countable. So since the power set two to the n is uncountable, okay, we obtain that C is also uncountable. Thank you.